<laughs> it says live for me. Yeah, it does said live, but it just takes another second or so for this little blue line. So I'll be, just give me like two more seconds and I'll let you yeah. Yep. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. If you're new to me, you may not know that this show started out of the pandemic. It was March 21st, 2020. It was the day after the governor in the state I lived put the sheltering in place order in and I was going live. I thought I was going live to my private group, but I'm very bad with technology and I never put my glasses on and I pushed the wrong button. I ended up going live to both YouTube and Facebook and there was like 600 people watching and I'm like, whoa, because people were really craving a sense of community and connection. And as much as I like doing that, I did not want to just do it myself because I got tired of hearing my own voice. And so I said, let me just see if I got any friends that will come on the show. And what's really interesting is today is the 443rd show and the first two shows was my friend Dr. Nikki Davis who at the time was actually at True North and one of the shows we did like 10 o'clock at night because people were really you know scared and just wanting to connect and so here she's back for the fourth time because I was really I I, I I thought about having her on the anniversary and well she got well so I'm Dr. Joel Furman and I think she understands because I decided <laughs> out of fairness to pick whichever guest had the most views and it was Dr. Furman and we always love talking to him but we also love talking to her because she cooks as good as she looks. She's going to be making a sweet potato doll, which sounds fabulous in the Instant Pot. And she has got a virtual retreat coming up that I believe is absolutely free. And she's going to tell you all about it. And what's even more exciting is she's going to be able to do telemedicine now. And she's fabulous. And guys, seriously, even if you have a doctor that you like, having a plant-based doctor on your team, somebody that is familiar with lifestyle medicine, even if you only have like an appointment now and then, it's a game changer. Please welcome back my first, my second, and my 443rd guest, Dr. Nikki Davis. Hi, AJ. Thank you so much. So excited to be here. So well, great to see. I, I can't believe that it's already been a year since our first episode together. And I am okay with you choosing Dr. Furman for the season one <laughs> finale or the season two open. Yeah, the season two open. Well, I, you know, I, I was just, you know, I, I just, I just thought it would be fair. And, and, and of course I'm, I'm very happy to have him of course, and that he was able to do it. And yeah, it's just, it's going to be exciting. We've got a bunch of new shows on the new season. We start with Dr. Furman, then we go to Dr. Lyle Goldhammer, and then we go to Dr. McDougal and uh, yeah. Be well, great. I, I just feel lucky to be talking to you when you are talking to some of the greats out there. So that's great. Well, thank you. Well, you are one of the yeah. greats. And you're gonna, <laughs> we, need the, we need people to fill their shoes because one day, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so what's nice about you and I is that you trained with the greats. I mean, you worked at the McDougal program. You worked at True North. I mean, what better education could you get? I know I got really lucky. I was able to squeeze into one of McDougal's programs in while I was in medical school before he quote unquote retired. I know you say you're retired, but come on, you work I'm not every retired. day. I'm, not, I'm not retired. I'm tired, and, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to travel anymore, but I'm definitely not retired. Okay, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. But yeah, so I got to squeeze in with him and that was just amazing. And that's been five years now. <laughs> Uh, and then being able to intern at True North was a dream come true as well. So, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun getting to learn from all these wonderful people. Nice. So what did you learn? Oh, my. Well, True North, especially we got to learn about water fasting. So that was a lot of fun. And I had a couple of patients that wanted to to water fast. And so I was able to medically supervise their water fasts while I was in Montana. That's very cool. Yeah. And then, of course, with Dr. McDougall, it's feeding people delicious food and watching them get better. I mean, what's better than that? Yeah. I mean, you, you're a lot younger than me, so and you probably have a different tolerance for how annoyed you get. But it's just it's just after a while, just like when people say, well, I can't eat carbs, I can't eat potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choking on my words for being so intolerant, but 
But it drives me crazy, you know, because that's exactly what people eat to get slender and healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm on the same page as you. I, that's, I mean, that's how I stay trim and that's how my whole family stays healthy. So I, I, I don't get it, but you know what, we're doing the right thing by talking to people and letting them know that carbs are not the enemy. Potatoes are not the enemy. In fact, it's my favorite food. So me too. Me too. I can't yeah. imagine. I mean, a life without potatoes and sweet potatoes, I just cannot imagine. No. And which is great because I've got sweet potatoes here today that we're going to be cooking with. So yeah. Do you get at all the varieties? You're, you're, where do you live exactly? What city, if I may ask that? Exactly. Yeah, I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. So you have probably whole foods and things. So you probably get a variety yeah. of sweet potatoes there, not yes. just the orange ones. Yeah. Nice. Yep. yep. Yeah. I love the purple ones making fries in the air fryer with the purple ones. Yeah. Those are the best. Yeah. So, da, I love, I love that you're using the instant pot. Well, I am a little bit on the newer side to the instant pot. And, you know, I, I had this recipe for sweet potato doll and it takes a while to make. And I thought, well, maybe if I just throw everything in there, it'll work. And it did. It was delicious. So, so it's kind of one of those accidental things that happened. Um, but I'm still learning with it. And I've been having a lot of fun so far. So well, let's do it. And then and if you want to talk about the retreat now, or if you want to get the recipe in the Instant Pot, maybe, and then we can talk about it. Because then you'll Sure. That pot. sounds good. Yeah, because it'll. I think it's going to be a 10 minute which, you know, it has to preheat and everything. And then we'll release some of the steam. So we'll have plenty of time to talk. But um, so this is going to be a sweet potato doll that my mom actually gave me the recipe. Uh, my mom, it's funny because she's, I would call her 95% plant-based. Uh, and initially she was not plant-based at all. And when I read the China study, I said, my mom needs to read this. And so I told her that for my birthday, the present that I wanted was for her to read the China study. So she did. And soon after she went plant-based and this was a recipe that she got actually from a vegan club that she was part of in Mesquite, Nevada. I don't know if you know Mesquite, but it's a small town. I've heard of it. Yeah. For retirees basically. And it's pretty conservative. And the fact that they had a vegan club there was just amazing. And this is one of the recipes that came out of that vegan club and I've tweaked it a little bit, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty much just from that club. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll tell you kind of what the ingredients are, and then we'll start doing some chopping. So it's pretty simple. It's you take two sweet potatoes, two small yellow onions, and I just have one bigger one. So I'm just going to use one, um, three garlic cloves minced. And I've actually just got some minced garlic that I'm going to use for that. Uh, some red pe pepper flakes, if you like it a little bit spicy, uh, turmeric and garam masala, and then uh, some broth. And just because I'm lazy, sometimes I'll just buy, and this one's a uh, engine two because it's low sodium without oil uh, broth. And that's just easy just to kind of throw it in when you're trying to be quick. And then uh, some red lentils. So it's a cup of red lentils. And that's just some that I got from whole foods that's uh, really close to our house. And then six to eight cups of spinach. So quite a bit of spinach, but as you know, a big bowl of spinach like this turns into not much spinach when you heat it up. So, so that's what we're gonna put in it. So I'm just gonna start kind of cutting up my sweet potatoes and throwing stuff in. And what I do with my sweet potatoes uh, and actually I do this with my mangoes and potatoes. If I want to take off the skins is I just use this peeler and I'll just peel off that outer skin for this recipe. I've been posting the link for your retreat in the chat. It's also oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's um, one of that retreat. It's, um, so it's on Saturday, the 20th, which happens to be the first day of spring. And it's, we're calling it spring into your best life, uh, but it's going to be fun. It, I'm going to be speaking at it and I'm going to be covering lifestyle medicine, which if you're not familiar with that, it's uh, an aspect of medicine that's really focused on helping people 
not only prevent, but to treat and even sometimes be able to reverse chronic diseases that are diseases that we get due to lifestyles, especially diet. And so lifestyle medicine has been around for several years now, but just recently uh, they made it to where people could be board certified in lifestyle medicine. So that's something that I chose to do. So now I'm board certified, not only in family medicine, but also in uh, lifestyle medicine. So uh, I'm going to be talking about that. There are six pillars of lifestyle medicine, and one of those pillars includes a whole food plant-based diet. So I'm going to be chatting about all those pillars. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then we've got an orthopedic surgeon who's, uh, who lives near me, actually. He's near Salt Lake City, but he's in a little town called Park City. That's actually where they do the Sundance Film Festival. And he, uh, he's brilliant. He's going to be talking about the benefits of a plant-based diet. So that'll be a lot of fun to hear from him. And then we're going to have uh, a personal trainer, uh, physical fitness expert who has been vegan for over 25 years and is going to be talking to us about, you know, staying healthy and, and exercise and all those good things. And then we're going to have uh, uh, another local friend of mine. She's a midwife. And uh, she's also been vegan for a very long time. I want to say probably as long as you, AJ, I remember you saying something over 40 years, something like yeah, that. 40, it's almost, uh, it'll be 44 soon. Yeah. So, uh, so she's been, she's been vegan almost, you know, for a very long time in her life. And she's going to be talking to us about stress reduction and she's going to be doing um, like a guided meditation. And then the last person that we're going to have is um, someone who's going to be doing a food demo for us. So we're going to be learning about some healthy plant-based snacks. So that, that'll be the day. It's going to be uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Time is going to be the start. And I, I think I'm going to be speaking first, uh, but 10 a.m. And then it'll go until one o'clock. So for you, it would be 9 a.m. to noon. Wow. Uh, is the orthopedic doctor a vegan? He is. Yes. Yeah. And actually he was one of the co-founders of a organization here in Utah called plant-based Utah. And they are a nonprofit that runs, they do events and, um, you know, they help feed, uh, feed people who don't have access to healthy foods. Um, you know, and, they uh, asked me to be on their board and to kind of help out with some of their events and things like that. And so I actually met uh, Dr. Olson is his name. I met him um, back before I went to my residency, which was in 2017. And so when I moved back, it was fun to kind of reconnect with all these great people who are doing amazing things here in, in Utah. So now I'm just peeling my onion here. Hopefully Maybe. I don't cry. No, oh, I know. I, so I just, I never, it never gets any easier. And all those tricks that people have with the putting, lighting a candle or closing your mouth or onion goggles, yeah. if you're sensitive, <laughs> man, it just, it is the way it is. I know. Yeah. I'm waiting. I haven't felt it yet, but we'll see. <laughs> you know, they don't use uh, raw onion at True North, I think for lots of reasons. Oh. They use cook, yeah. but I forget what Dr. Goldhammer said. So, yeah. yeah. It's so strong. Yep, yeah, I've never talked to a vegan orthopedic surgeon before. I'd love to have him on the show because it'd be interesting his perspective on just like bone healing and bone health. I'd love to talk to him. He would love that because it's it's really interesting. You know, they get to see an uh, in in close up close view of what your joints and things look like, and there's a big difference in people who are you know, eating the standard American diet and seeing the inflammation that's going on in their joints. So, uh, yeah, he's, he would be actually a really great one to have on. I'm sure he'd love it. Please, please introduce me. Yes, I will. Yeah. So now I'm just chopping up. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, just, I just had a, a comment and also a question that there is a question from Hecate. If you can leave the skin on, if you like. Um, I think you probably could, um, certainly you'd get a few more, uh, nutrients doing that, but I found that just having that, uh, that extra kind of hard texture just isn't as delicious. So 
April said, oh, April says the people who started the club in Mesquite are my friends. I've gone to their potlucks. What are her parents' names? Can you say? <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm guessing, I think that the people who did the potluck, their names were Jerry and Elaine, which if you know Seinfeld, it's kind of funny. Uh, but uh, my, my mom's name is Heidi. And I don't know if she, I don't think she was with my, uh, with her husband at that time. So if you know Heidi, it's kind of a unique name, but she, my mom has moved now with her husband and they're living in Phoenix. Oh, well, when you visit them, you can visit me. I'm four hours away. I know I've been wanting, we've actually been talking about getting out to your side of the world. That seems I've been there before. I uh, did an interview for one of my resident when I was re interviewing for residencies. I went to Palm Springs. That would it would have been a lovely place to be. So you would have would it would would you have been a resident at Eisenhower or Desert Regional Medical Center? I think it was Desert Regional. Wow, that that's where right. I volunteered until the pandemic. That would have been oh cool. oh yeah. with your doggy, right? Yep, but no more volunteer work. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe one day. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just um, cutting these up into kind of one by one chunks. And really these are just gonna be how, however big you want your piece to be. Cause uh, you know, they'll still be in pieces uh, when this is all cooked. So I just kind of chop them up into I'm getting lucky that these are actually, this is actually pretty easy to cut through. Sometimes you're like, <laughs> It's really difficult to cut through. This is a pretty big onion. I might just do half of this one. Kind of depends on how much, how much you like onion. I love onion. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for people that can't have it for whatever reason. It's funny. My son doesn't think he likes it, but then he eats this and he loves it. And it's full of onion. So. <laughs> I'll tell him yeah <laughs> I think he knows I think I tell him like hey well this has onion in it like, oh okay I think it's different when it's cooked though don't you oh absolutely see and I, I I do like raw onion too though I have to say a little bit I like green onions raw you know scallions mm, yes yeah those are really good those are my fave all right, so we'll get those going. Oh, I'm starting to feel it a little bit. My eyes. <laughs> I wonder if freezing it would help. I wonder. It might be hard to cut. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. So we've got, so you're gonna chop up your two small onions or I just did a half of a large onion and then two small sweet potatoes. So I put those in there. Now I'm gonna put in my three garlic cloves, minced, but I, I already have just some minced garlic here. So I'm just gonna grab that and just kind of eyeball it. I use that sometimes when I just either run out or don't feel like. Uh -huh. Hey, so you, you have some exciting news. Can we tell? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I've been, you know, it's funny, AJ, actually, this is because of you. So back when I did that first show, when I was at True North, I started watching your shows because I was just staying there by myself. And, uh, you know, you had these great shows on and I got to talk with you for the first one, but then you had these great guests on. And so I think it was within maybe the first week that you'd started your shows and you had Dr. Lori Marbus on plant-based telehealth. Mm -hmm. So I watched that show and I said, wow, this is amazing that somebody has finally come up with this great way to see plant-based doctors, no matter where you live. And uh, so I reached out to them at that time and I said, Hey, I'm still in residency, but I'm going to be graduating in July. Of, this would have been July of 2020. 
And I'd be very interested in the possibility of working with you if that's something that you'd be interested in. And we talked back and forth and they kind of started small, but they've been around for a year now. And uh, it just was able to get to where we could work it out that uh, I'm going to be starting uh, with them in a couple of weeks here. So uh, so I'll be available on plant-based telehealth for people to be able to see me for telemedicine appointments. So very, very excited about that. That is great. Dina's yes. saying what she's asking me, would I put all the vegetables in the instant pot and then puree? Probably because I'm so lazy. That's how I usually cook. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So... All right, so then I have, so we've got the sweet potatoes, the onions, I put the garlic cloves in. So now we're gonna do a three quarter teaspoon of turmeric and then three quarter teaspoon of garam masala. So this is my turmeric. So I've already got it kind of pulled out. This is the three quarter teaspoon. So I'm just gonna throw that in there. And then my three quarter teaspoon of the garam masala. And then um, this is just some red pepper flakes. I didn't put on there how much, so it just kind of depends on how spicy you want it. So I'm just, I just put in probably not even a teaspoon, probably like a half a teaspoon. So we've got that. And then um, the next thing you're going to put in is the broth. So the recipe just says 30, about 30 ounces. And this just happens to be 32 ounces. So I'm just going to throw this whole thing in there. I don't know if they sell these anymore. I think, I think they do, but I bought it at Whole Foods. It's just the engine two brand I know um, and he, I like it. He Go was ahead. branding. He said he come, came on the show. I don't know if they still have it by, maybe you guys know in the chat if you can still get the engine two broth. Yeah, I mean, I, I got it not that long ago, but I did notice that they started rebranding themselves where they're not calling it engine two anymore. They're just calling it plant strong. Yes, so maybe that's it. Maybe yeah. it's a different name. So but I like this because it's oil free and low sodium. So that's, that's why. I, yep. Yeah. You know what and I mean? It's a lot like it's, it's a, a local spicery makes this like powder broth. It's just knock your socks off. And it's just, it's really, yeah, and you just, cause it's so easy to store. Cause it's just this little bag of yeah. know, a tablespoon. It's and just, then you just mix it with hot water. Yeah. It's hmm. really, really good. And it's SOS free. So I really love that. Oh, that's so very let's, nice. Let's see. Question. Uh, Kathy says, does Medicare cover telehealth appointments with plant-based telehealth? No. So if you have Medicare, you can be seen by one of the doctors, but, um, but it will not be a Medicare visit. It, it won't be covered by Medicare. So uh, it's just cash-based. So we don't, it actually, plant-based telehealth doesn't take any insurance, but they have had some success with where they provide what's called a super bill. And you can take that bill and then provide that to your insurance company to see if they'll reimburse it. And they have had quite a few patients who've been able to get their fees reimbursed completely. So, so that's a possibility. Nice. Gina says, I wish I had her calm demeanor. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I suppose I am very calm. <laughs> Can you tell us how, your secret? I'm the opposite. You know, I don't know. I think it's just the way I've always been just very even killed, uh, very patient, you know, it, it makes it nice having a kid. I'm very patient with him. And that's just the way I am. I just always have been. I'm going to put uh, my cup of red lentils in. So uh, I always put in a little extra just because I love lentils, but about a cup. And then the only thing out of the recipe that you don't put in now for the instant pot is the spinach because that just very easily will wilt once everything's hot, you just stir it in at the end. So uh, I think we've got everything in there now besides the spinach. So uh, I'm just gonna give it a quick stir and then we'll get it started. Is this your first instant pot? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. So I'm still, I'm still learning. It's, um, you know, one of those things that you just have to kind of, I feel like you just have to go for it and just try it. And I, I am waiting though, cause I haven't found a good whole food plant-based oil-free instant pot cookbook. 
I don't know if you know of any. Let's see. The ones, well, especially oil free. It's oil free. Well, I know that Kathy Hester makes every effort in her recipes to give oil free, sugar free, salt free options. Okay. But yeah. one that's completely oil free. I don't think so. I will okay. say though, um, there was a book that came out quite a long time ago by Lorna Sass. I don't know her, but she has a book called A uh, Great Vegetarian Cooking Under Pressure. And what was oh. really cool about it is it won a James Beard Award, which I think it might be the only vegan cookbook that won one. And, uh, you know, I just just don't use the SOS if it's in there. And it, there's, it tends yeah. not to be a lot anyway. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So I just, um, so what I did was I just chose uh, just the pressure cook, just the manual. I put it on high for 10 minutes. So I don't know if that's the best time or pressure to do it at, but that's what's worked for me. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, and it turns out great. So that'll just take some time to preheat and then cook. Uh, and then, and then we'll add the spinach in after. So pretty yeah. simple. If you added the greens now, they would be complete mush by the time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. You don't need to do that. Definitely. So, um, but yeah, it's, uh, we've made this recipe. My mom makes this recipe a lot. My sister makes it a lot. Uh, they just do it on the stove. So, uh, because they don't have instant pots, but I tried it and it, it worked great in here. So it's been delicious and it's a really quick one for dinner. I just throw it in there and let it go. Um, you could, it's, it's pretty starchy because it's got the sweet potatoes and the lentils. So it's really filling, but you could, if you wanted to serve it over something like rice or some other kind of grain, if you really wanted to, you know, do something like that. Well, we know what your mom and sister are getting for Christmas this year, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Right. I know they should. In fact, I just got my sister to get a, an air fryer because she's, I keep telling her how great the air fryer is and so she finally got one of those and my mom has one of those now too. So we're, we're slowly transitioning. Well, that's weird. They got the air fryer before the Instant Pot. Usually I think it's yeah. the other way around. So the, I'm, the link to your free virtual conference this Saturday, it, it is Eventbrite, but it's free. They, right. They can still yes. get, and get their tickets. It's, and yeah. Yep. It's hundred percent free. Yep. Nice. Nice. You yeah. guys have any questions for Dr. Davis. Why are so many plant-based doctors named Davis? Nikki Davis, Garth Davis, Brenda Davis. What is it? That's true. I guess it's just one of those common names. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it is my husband's name. I'm a Nielsen. Ah, so that's true. Okay. <laughs> so you know what they say, a watched instant pot never boils, right? It's true. Let's make sure it's still... Oh yeah, it's working. It's preheating. Ooh, we have so. named Susan saying, I'm loving how to eat mostly plant-based. Thank you so much. Diagnosis confirmed today, breast cancers. Your recipe will strengthen me journey. So I'm going to maybe suggest you consider going all plant-based and watch some of the interviews that we did with breast cancer survivors on this page, Susan, like Dr. Ruth Heidrichs, who had stage four and 50 years later, she's running ultra marathons. And for sure, check out Dr. Christy Funk yesterday's interview about breast cancer and what you can do to eat it, to beat it. And yeah. And, and I think I saw that you had, um, you remember the week that you did the main street vegan Academy mm -hmm. people? Uh, I think she calls herself vegan Naomi, but she's a breast cancer survivor as well. So she'd be another good one to watch. Absolutely. So questions for the doctor, if you don't mind. Oh, all right. You got to okay. print it out and everything. Yeah. No well, pressure. For, there's a question in the chat. Uh, can I freeze turmeric? I, I freeze, I freeze fresh turmeric. Yeah. I don't see why not. I mean, ah. I, I'll put a lot of my spices and flowers in the fridge. Uh, just kind of, you know, keep them better longer. So I don't see why you couldn't do that. Oh, thank you, Allison, for, I, I totally forgot, and I actually have this book. She's so right. High Carb Hannah has an oil-free pressure cooker cookbook. Thank you for reminding me. I can see my bookshelf over there, but not all the books, and I do have it. It's excellent, so thank you. So oh, good. Let's see. please ask Dr. Davis to explain the difference between lentils and split peas and whether they can be used interchangeably. Well, I mean, okay, so they're both legumes, um, but 
you're, you know, you're, it's a pea and then there's the lentil. So, I mean, they're just, they're two different types of legumes. Um, peas have a little bit of a different flavor. I would say lentils probably take on the flavor of whatever you're cooking it in a little bit better than a pea, than a pea would. Um, so that would, that's what I would say the difference would be. Of course, AJ, you're the chef, so you might know better than me. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I would have to, <laughs> but I just, I, yeah. I know that lentils tend to take less time to cook. They're very, very small and they cook very fast. They and, do. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, I, I could look it up, but I don't know the difference. And can they be used interchangeably? I would say, depending on what the recipe is. So they, I do think they taste a little bit different though. Mm -hmm. But I think you probably could. I think they probably would cook around the same amount of time. So, and you know, these lentils are split. If you look at them, they've been cut down the center. And I think that split peas are the same where they cut them. So it just cooks a lot quicker when it's like that. What I love about lentils is the color because it's just the red is so pretty compared to like the brown. And the yes, I, like I, I completely agree. Yep, absolutely. So uh, from Melissa, my mom has been told that her high blood pressure is genetic. What are the genetic conditions that cause hypertension and are they rare? So they are rare. Uh, it's, it's, I would say that for 99.9% .9 of the population, having high blood pressure is based on lifestyle. So if your doctor is telling you it's genetic, it's either because you've been, you've got a great plant-based doctor who's looked at what you've eaten and you've been eating a whole food plant-based diet that's oil-free and hopefully sugar and salt-free too and you've been doing that for long enough and your blood pressure hasn't budged and you've maybe confirmed that you have something that's causing this high blood pressure. I mean, there are things that can happen in your kidneys that can cause your blood pressure, pressure to rise, um, but they are, they're not as common as you would think. So for most people, blood pressure can be improved and reversed by just changing your diet. Well, what was interesting is that, you know, I, I worked, not worked there, like worked there, but for 10 years, I ran a program at True North that went anywhere from 10 days to several weeks called the Holiday Extravaganza. And there were people there that really did not reverse their high blood pressure until they water fasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's something where if you've had high blood pressure for a long time, I mean, there's good reason for it. In fact, it's funny because in medical school, I remember one of my preceptors asking me, uh, Nikki, what causes high blood pressure? And I said, well, is it, you know, the plaques that are building up in your arteries? He says, we don't know. <laughs> that was his answer. We don't know what causes it. And it's pretty clear to me that if you think of all the vessels in your body as basically pipes and these pipes need to bring things to your body all over the place, that if your pipes are gunked up, you've got plaque, you know, it's called atherosclerosis, uh, where it's hardening your arteries, even that you're narrowing the lumen of that artery. And it's just, I mean, it's science. It's if, if it's more, a more narrow area for the blood to get through, it's going to have to force that blood through faster to get that same amount of blood through to, you know, the very tips of your toes and the tips of your fingers. So it makes sense that if you've got injury to your arteries, and you've got that narrowing that it's going to cause you to have increased blood pressure. The longer that's been going on, the harder it is to improve, but you can definitely improve it. Can you reverse it completely and have the best blood pressure ever? Not for everybody necessarily. If you've been eating a standard American diet from the time you were an, you know, a child up into your eighties, that's going to be more difficult, but we have seen, I mean, when I was at True North, I have seen people with long-standing hypertension, not only being able to reverse their hypertension with just changing their diet, but also with doing the water fasting seems to really give your body the ability to heal itself. And if you think about what your body does every day, it deals with food that you're putting down into your body. It has to deal with that food, get the nutrients out of it. And that's a lot of work for your body. So if you give your body a rest from that 
and just let it start to heal itself. It, it, it really is amazing what, what can be done. So yeah, I, I saw it while I was there. I saw lots of people improving, not only their blood pressure, but their diabetes too. I mean, people who'd had diabetes for years and years with their blood pressure, just zooming down. So pretty amazing. That's incredible. And some, for some people, it's not until they stop the salt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The salt can, can definitely make a, a big difference. And, you know, the salt is twofold. It's, you've got the salt that if you think about salt, it, it, pulls water towards it. So you're increasing the volume inside of your, your vessels just by having more salt in your blood, it's bringing more water, uh, which just is increasing the volume. And by doing that, you're going to increase your blood pressure. But then the other thing with salt too, is it causes you to eat more. So when you're eating more, you're going to eat more calories, you know, and possibly gain weight. And just by having extra weight on your body that can increase your blood pressure too. Yeah, thank you for saying that because there's a lot of disagreement, but the, the facts are the facts. And I actually pulled up an article from the medical literature that Dr. Rosanne Alviero, who doesn't eat salt and recommends SOS free, said about how 11%, she said, the people that eat salt eat 11% more calories. And people are always looking for an angle to find other ways to eat salt by switching the kind of salt they're eating. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. But actually, you and I had talked uh, in one of the interviews about ground sumac berries and using that as an alternative to salt. That's something that I love to do. I'll make uh, hash browns and, you know, you have to make sure that you find hash browns or make your own that don't have salt already in them. Uh, but then just to kind of get that little extra tangy flavor, you can find all sorts of things that work. And that's actually something that I had learned from Kathy Fisher because she was there when I was at True North and she was doing some food demonstrations and she had the sumac. And so I tried, I said, this is great. Cause it gives you that little, little extra something that you're expecting if you're used to salt. Yeah. It's so hard. Like I had Gwen Whitaker on the show earlier who has an, a truly SOS free restaurant. And it's just, it's such a tough sell. You know, even Dr. McDougal says no salt, no sale. And it seems to be true for many people. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's one of those things it's, it's all, it's a spectrum I think if, if you can get away with doing the SOS free, great. I mean, I know that for me, when I did that at True North, it, I felt amazing. I loved it. And I definitely feel better when I eat that way. I mean, I already eat oil free, definitely. Um, but, you know, in the past, I've definitely allowed a little bit of salt and sugar in there, uh, much less now. And I do notice that for instance, I eat more if I have salt on my food because it just, it tastes a little bit better, I guess, but you get used to not having it. Right. So appetite when you haven't stimulant. had it, you don't need it anymore. It's totally an appetite stimulant. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I mean, if you're looking to eat more food, put then salt do on it. your food. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny because when I used to work in a, in assisted living, they, they cook without salt because so many of the residents were on, you know, blood pressure medication. But the funny thing was, is that that could be almost have a case because these people were also not eating. Maybe they needed the salt to, to actually eat, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So, and it really, it, it really depends on the person. If, if you can get by with a little, I mean, the way Dr. McDougal says it is he doesn't want the salt or the sugar to be the thing that stop you from eating this way. And so if you need a little bit of brown sugar on your oatmeal or a little bit of salt on top of your food, not cooked in it to be able to enjoy this way of eating, then he thinks it's worth it. Right. Uh, of course, you know, eating, eating salt and sugar, it's, it's not natural. It's not something that, you know, that is something that, uh, that we should necessarily be eating, but for some people, if, if that's what's going to keep you eating a whole food plant-based diet, I, I can see that. Right. And the, the thing is, is there's a lot of people that we both know that can't just do a little. Yes. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people, yeah. I think, I think it's hard for a lot of us. Yeah. The thing so, is, is, people that don't eat this way, they just, they haven't given themselves enough time to neuroadapt and know how good the food can be. That's, that's the right. sad thing is, is because that's why water fasting can be so helpful because then the food tastes better sooner, but to, you know, everybody's, true. On, everybody's on a journey. Barbara <laughs> says, where is the doctor's practice? So you, you don't have an actual practice practice right now, right? Right. So I, I work from home and I'm going to be doing the telemedicine services very soon through plant-based telehealth. I'll be able to see people in Utah where I live, 
uh, virtually, but also in California. So I'm licensed in both California and Utah, and I'm going to be expanding that pretty soon, uh, most likely to Nevada, Arizona, Wyoming, uh, Washington State, uh, and then I might expand uh, past that at some point. Um, oh, Montana, probably. So, uh, but right now it's just Utah and California virtually. Uh, eventually I do wanna run uh, 10 day live-in programs for people uh, in different locations around the country, but that's just something that's had to be put on hold due to the coronavirus, so. Look, look down here because real estate is cheap. <laughs> I, I would love that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. It's a beautiful okay. area. Yep, and then I could actually uh, be a guest, whatever for you. So Deborah says, what will a visit costs with Dr. Davis. I mean, that's plant-based telehealth. I think it's the same pricing for all the doctors or is it not? is, it is. Yep. You can see, and you know, plant-based telehealth is amazing. It's got, well, let's see, we've got, okay. We just finished. So we're just going to let this go. Oh, it's cooking now. So great. So it's cooking. Perfect. So we got that's 10 minutes to cook. Great. Uh, we can but, chat. Cause I see some questions. So that's great. Perfect. So yeah. So plant-based telehealth I mean, they've got Dr. Clapper as part of plant-based telehealth, which is amazing. Uh, but they've got a, a, a bunch of really amazing doctors and it's the same price for everyone. So it's $150 for 30 minutes. That's so, great. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. And, okay. Here's a question. Um, can, Judy says, can you prescribe medication virtually? Yes. Yep. So we do have the ability to prescribe medications and send for lab tests. So uh, pretty much most things that can be done in a, you know, one-on-one -on -one personal visit, you can do over telehealth now. So I think uh, plant-based telehealth actually was lucky in a way they started their business in March of 2020. So right when the pandemic hit, they were starting their business and at the time, I would say some people were okay with doing telehealth. And in fact, if you live somewhere where there are no plant-based doctors, you're willing to do telehealth because that gives you access to those plant-based doctors. But now after we've all been through this pandemic and a lot of us have said, I just don't want to go see the doctor in person. I don't want to be around sick people at the clinic. And so a lot of the doctors have been doing telehealth visits. I mean, that's what I had to do as the pandemic started to hit was really switch over in my residency, seeing people virtually. So it has, I think, made it to where people are more willing and okay with doing telehealth appointments versus going in and seeing someone in person. You're, you're not gonna get the, the same physical exam. So if you have a major issue that needs to be seen in the emergency room or You've got something that where somebody needs to listen to your lungs or listen to your heart. Obviously, we can't do that over telehealth. Um, but for a lot of other things, it, it works really well. I wish Dennis did it because I hate going to the dentist. Oh, I know. How could we do that virtually? That would be amazing. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. It's just, it's like one of my biggest phobias. I do it, but I don't love it. And I always have very nice dentists, but there's just something... But I was kidding, of course, they can't really do yeah. it, clean your teeth virtually. So <laughs> Carolyn says, if other greens such as chard or turnip could be used in place of the spinach. Oh yeah, I think, um, you know, I like this flavor of the spinach in this dish, uh, but absolutely, I think you could do kale, chard. I mean, really, really anything would work well. I think um, the spinach really wilts very easily um, once this is cooked, I'm just going to throw it in there and it's hot enough that it will wilt in there nicely. Something that's a little bit tougher, like the chard or the kale might be something that you need to, um, either pre-cook a little bit, or, um, I don't know. I, I think you could throw it in here, but it might get a little bit squishy if it's in there too long. Cause really this is working hard to cook those sweet potatoes. Um, and you don't want to overcook those greens. Great. Judy says, don't we need some salt? My mother-in-law almost faints if she doesn't have some salt. Well, if you think about it, salt is really, you know, sodium chloride and you're getting sodium and chloride in, in all the foods that you're eating. I mean, there's salt in the dirt. If you really think about it, it's just minerals that, that you're going to be getting by eating certain foods. And if you're um, you know, looking at certain things that salt has, like, um, you know, 
iodine, uh, you know, that's something that you can easily get through something like sea vegetables. So you don't necessarily need salt. I mean, you think about it, it's not, um, it's not something natural to the human diet to go and find salt to put on your food. Um, you, you get all those minerals uh, just by eating the foods themselves. That's great. Thanks. All right. I have a question from Blair. Please ask Dr. Davis if she has seen anyone else lose a significant amount of weight, 60 pounds for me, and experience neuropathy. I eat whole food plant-based, SOS free, and exercise every day. Hmm. Well, um, so neuropathy is uh, basically where you've got, uh, you've got difficulty with feeling. So usually in the tips of your fingers or the tips of your toes, where you just don't have the sensitivity that you, you normally do. And that can be caused by uh, a lot of different things. One of the common causes is diabetes. Um, but that's something that I would say you definitely want to talk with your doctor about um, when did it start? Are there any other conditions that you have that could be uh, causing that to happen? Thank you. So I keep the, the link to the uh, event. Is that on your website? Because I keep posting it, but people are asking me if it's also on your website. Uh, I don't have it on my website uh, currently, um, but I, you know, once we get off here today, I can definitely post that onto my website. Uh, I do have it posted on my social media accounts. So if you find me on Facebook or Instagram, it's Nikki Davis MD. So it's N I K I D A V I S M D. And I've got it linked on there as well. And all I have to do is click the link. I posted it lots of times during the chat and it's also in the show notes. And by show notes, guys, I mean the description under the YouTube box. There is no show notes on Facebook. So if you're watching on Facebook and you want to see show notes, like the recipe, which Dr. Davis gave us, it is on YouTube right now. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Sir says, what are some sea vegetables? Oh, so if you enjoy um, making uh, plant-based sushi, you, you know, just using the seaweed. So uh, we make plant-based sushi all the time at our house and we just use the seaweed wrapper and that'll give you some iodine right there. How much do you need? Like do you, every day, a few times a week? Um, I, so if I would have to look that up to know for sure how much you would need, um, because I think it probably depends on what exactly you're eating, uh, to know exactly the amount, uh, to get. Um, but that's something that I would say you'd want to look it up or talk to uh, a physician or a dietitian about if you're not going to be eating salt and you are concerned about getting iodine, um, you know, just making sure that you're, that you're looking at that so that you get enough. Yeah. My favorite sea vegetable is smoked dulse. Have you ever had it smoked? It's very good. No, I haven't. So how do you eat that? I just, just tear off a piece and eat it. It's just yummy. Mm. I don't really put it in anything. I just kind of eat it when I, 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 I forget a lot though. Maybe you're reminding me, I'm probably not eating enough sea vegetables. <laughs> yep, not so good. Let's see. Do you have one of those diverters for your Instant Pot when you release the pressure? Oh, I don't. Um, I have read about those. Um, let's see. We're still cooking. we got three minutes left. Um, I have heard about those, though. Uh, I've seen little shapes, like they make them in little dragons and things like yeah, that. Or, or like people, like it looks like this coming out <laughs> of the ears. Yeah, you, you can get really elaborate ones or, or inexpensive. They're, they're just, I like it because then it, the steam goes that way instead of your cabinets or your ceiling. You know, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. No, I'm not that fancy yet. <laughs> you could probably make your own with a piece of, you know, pipe. Is that called PVC? You know, like, oh, yeah. just, just do your own. And uh, I think they should just include one with every purchase. I think that would be a good idea. They really should. And, you know, they could even, maybe they could do like a Chef AJ one. So it's the same coming out of your ears. Absolutely. For the <laughs> time people say, where do you get your protein? <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. Or I can't eat carbs. That'd be oh, great. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's see, there's a question, B12, how important is it and what is the best? B12 is extremely important. So if you are eating plant-based, you absolutely need to be eating B12. Uh, I eat, you know, I take a B12 supplement, my husband does, my kid does. Um, so absolutely, you should be taking it. The recommendation is to get five micrograms per day, which is actually 
not very much. Um, but I end up taking, I think I have a 500 microgram that I take and I'll take it every week or so. Um, but absolutely it's so important, um, for your red blood cells. Um, and it's something that, uh, if you're deficient in can actually cause a lot of issues. So, uh, there are people who are even not plant-based who are becoming deficient in B12 because we're just not eating the way that we once did, which is digging carrots out of the ground that might have a little bit of dirt on them and, and eating them because really B12 is produced by bacteria. And so it can be found in the soil, but if you're washing all the vegetables and things that you're eating so well, it's just, it's stripping that off of there. So you're not getting any of that from the soil or from your food anymore. Uh, and so really you just need to make sure that, you know, if you're not going to be eating uh, food with dirt on it, that you need to make sure that you're eating uh, or taking a B12 supplement. Great. Thank you. Mona says, yeah. I, I put a clean towel. Oop, there's the beep, huh? Yes. The lid and then release the pressure helps a lot. But I find when I do the towel, it just makes the towel wet. So, um, so what is she saying? She's saying that she just opens it up. She puts a towel. She puts a towel. Oh. With it, and I, I found that that gets the towel really wet. Maureen I'm sure says, it does. Does meat have B12? So it, it does um, because animals that people eat, um, can make their own B12, um, better than we can. So like for instance, cows have the ability to make B12. And so, so it is, it can be found in animal foods. Um, so that is why if you are plant-based, you're more likely to become deficient in B12. But what I found is I think that just modern agriculture and um, you know, the way that we feed animals, the way we treat animals, uh, it's getting harder and harder to um, get the amount of B12 that you need, even if you're eating animal foods. Yep. All right. I'm going to release the steam here. I don't, I'm hoping it's not too loud for us. Okay. <laughs> but we'll see. Is that pretty loud? No, not at oh, all. Perfect. Okay, good. So we're just going to let that release and then, uh, and then we'll be able to take a look at it. That's great. Can you freeze the soup? Have you tried? Or the doll? Sorry, what? Have you ever tried to freeze the doll? Uh, no, not freeze it. Mm -mm. I think we would just eat it too quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Evelyn wants to know, do you personally take any other supplements? I do not. No. Um, I, I'm not uh, a fan of taking supplements that are not necessary. And I think B12 absolutely is necessary because we've changed the way that we eat our food, which has caused us to not be able to get the B12 that we once did. We're not getting the dirt on our food or, or accidentally eating little bugs and things like that that would have B12. Uh, but as far as other supplements, I think that a lot of it is something that you're gonna take into your mouth and it's just gonna end up in your toilet. <laughs> You know, it's, um, if you're looking to get the benefits from certain nutrients, the best way to do that is in, it, is in the packaged form of the whole food. So things like vitamin C, if you think that vitamin C is going to help your immune system or, or things like that, instead of taking a vitamin C supplement, just eat more oranges. The, the vitamin C works better when it is packaged with all the other things that it's supposed to be packaged with your body's just going to use it better. Uh, it doesn't make sense to strip away certain things out of foods and then to take that as a supplement. You really should just be getting those from the whole foods. Yeah. I, I'm not against supplements, but I always wonder why people supplement when they don't know what they're supplementing. So like, it's different if you have a blood test and are deficient and a doctor orders it, but I think a lot of people just take stuff because they think they need it and they probably don't. So for example, somebody's asking, well, don't, if we are SOS free, Mona says, don't we need to take iodine? And Maureen says, well, what about vitamin D3? Well, right. So you know, very good question. So vitamin D, how do we get that? Our body produces it when our skin is exposed to sunlight. So that's the absolute best way to get vitamin D. Uh, if you are deficient in vitamin D, then sometimes your doctor is going to ask you to take a supplement for some time so that you can get your level up. Um, you know, but really the best way to get it is naturally through the sun. Uh, and then, you know, but there, I mean, there are certain things that 
need to be supplemented. If, for instance, if you have some blood loss, maybe you were in a car accident and you lose a lot of blood, you're going to be low in iron and you're going to, your red blood cells are going to have to start, uh, you know, churning out new blood cells and you need iron for that. And so there are certain times that you're going to need to take supplements. It makes sense, but for overall health, just to take something to, to be healthier that you think is going to make you healthier. I, I just don't think, I think it's, it's uh, something that is a, a billion dollar industry. And a lot of people are making a lot of money on supplements. And unless you really, really need it, I just, I don't think that it's, um, you know, something that's beneficial to a lot of people. Dr. McDougall says expensive urine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do hospital work? I did in residency. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Were you, or were you already vegan then? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been vegan for a very long time. In fact, I was vegan before I went to medical school and being passionate about nutrition and health is what made me want to quit my job as a mechanical engineer and go to med medical school. So uh, I went to medical school as a vegan, as a plant-based person uh, to begin with. Uh, did all your classmates and professors know you were vegan and did that ever come up in your education? You know, it's really interesting. Uh, you know, a, a lot of them did know that. Yeah. And of all the, the, the medical students that were my closest friends, every single one of them, even though it wasn't immediate has reached out to me since medical school to ask for uh, my opinions on how they can switch to a plant-based diet. So the people who are closest to me saw the benefits for me. And even though it might've taken years, I've heard from every single one of my closest friends in medical school about them wanting to change to a plant-based diet. So it's pretty amazing just what being plant-based uh, in front of someone else can do for that person, even if you're not trying to, to sell it to that person. Although I did buy the starch solution for a couple of my friends in medical school. <laughs> it's just too good of a book. What about your uh, professors? Like, do, do they ever, do they ever poo poo or bash plant-based in medical school? I'm sure every medical school is different. You know, I don't think that I necessarily had any in medical school, but during residency, I did have some of my attending physicians ask about, you know, how do you, like the, the one that just made you fume chef AJ with how do you get enough protein? And, you know, this is from one of my attending physicians and it's just that, that question is something that I think a lot of people have answered for a very long time. And it's very, a very simple answer that, you know, I mean, all living things have protein. So if you're eating plants, you're getting protein, um, you know, but, but it's interesting to see that even, doctors who've been through medical school and residency and are brilliant doctors still don't know about the benefits of a plant-based diet. So yeah, I've, I've had, uh, you know, a lot of my senior physicians who just didn't know. And I did a lot of talks about plant-based nutrition while I was in residency teaching the other residents. Yeah, it's interesting because when I've been to medical conferences or just ones that aren't plant-based because for whatever reason, they, they don't serve very healthy food there. You know, mm. like heart, so I, my uncle who was a physician who passed away last year, he was, he received some award from the American Heart Association. I remember the dinner was like, like chicken and it, like, it just was like not healthy at all. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I complained about all the time when I was in residency was the clinic that I worked at. Every time somebody had a birthday, they had cake in the back room. And whenever they had a potluck, people were bringing in donuts. And I mean, I, I just, I understand that that's the way a lot of America eats, but we're a clinic We're we're a, you know, we're trying to help people get healthier in a clinic and to have the staff go against what we should really be teaching the patients. It just didn't make sense to me. I thought, you know, it's so much, it's just so easy to replace those donuts with some mandarin oranges or slices of watermelon. It's, it just, it didn't make sense to me. So I, and I mean, especially medical school and residency, the, the food of the day was always pizza. I'm sure if anybody watching has been in medical school or residency, like that's what you get fed all the time. Cause it's just easy. <laughs>
Yeah. You know, I just wonder, I have a friend who's a doctor at a major hospital in LA and I mean, it's getting better, but they always call him the crazy vegan doctor. He's like the only one that's not sick ever. That's not overweight. And they call him the crazy vegan doctor. Yep. Yep. You know, it's, it's times are changing. I mean, even in the amount of time that it's taken me to get through my medical training, uh, I've seen a big shift. So I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the work that you're doing, Chef AJ, and, and getting all of these people on your show to help spread the message, I think is, 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 is great. And it's making a big difference. Cool. We have a retired physician watching Dr. Woodruff, and he says, I don't know if it's true, but I heard once that pernicious anemia is an autoimmune problem. The immune system attacks intrinsic factor most autoimmune diseases are related to eating animal foods. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's, it's not a bad thought. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that, you know, I think that that's actually one thing that we will see as we do more research is that autoimmune diseases are linked more to um, animal foods than we are aware of now. So, all right, well, I just opened it up and it smells amazing. So I'm going to just scoop some out so that I can show you. So Gina is saying, if we sign up for the retreat, is there a replay? Because people know that I have Dr. Furman on at nine on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So uh, you will get a link to, we will re be recording it and you will get a link so that you can watch it at a later time. So if you're unable to make it, if you sign up for the event, uh, but you find that you're unable to make it, or maybe you miss parts of it for whatever reason, uh, we will be sending uh, a link to where you can then go and watch it at a later time. So definitely sign up for it, uh, even if you think that you'll miss part of it. And I don't blame you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come around the front so I can show you this to you. Hopefully you can see it. Let's see. Oh, yum. Talk white. Nice and steamy. So, and it's got all these beautiful chunks of sweet potato. The flavor is just amazing because it's, you know, it's savory, but then it's got that sweetness from the sweet potatoes, which is just, I think is one of the best flavors. It's really, really good. And, you know, depending on what you do for the, the broth, really this entire meal is SOS free. So, uh, and I, I don't think it needs anything added to it. So it doesn't need salt at all. And it's, and it's already oil-free and it's, it's all whole foods. So and it's mostly starch. It's got the sweet potatoes and the lentils. Boy, that looks amazing. Yes. And starch is my absolute favorite. I love starch. <laughs> I love starch. Gotta have, gotta have starch miles and miles and miles of starch. So now we have like, well, do we watch Dr. Davis or Dr. Furman? I don't know. I wish you could have started an hour later, but that's all right. So I didn't I, know. I know. I wish I would have known. I know. I'm the host. I got to be there. I can't. I got I to gotta be there for my guests. So, but yeah. I, I will watch the last two hours though. So that'll be perfect afterwards. Queen Great. of the Aries, whose birthday is coming up. Happy birthday. Wants to know how long will the soup is keep in the fridge? And Catitude said, don't forget the spinach. Yes. Oh, thank you. I, you know, that's funny. I always forget that at the very end because it's that last step. So um, I'm going to do that. And, um, you know, I've kept, I think that this could go for a few days in the, in the fridge, definitely. Uh, but we always, we always eat, we always eat it, uh, you know, for dinner and then we'll have it for lunch the next day and it's gone by then. So we only have it for a couple of days. So, uh, six to eight cups of spinach. This is about eight cups. What I do is I kind of just add it until I think it looks like it's enough. So I'm just gonna kind of throw this in there and it's nice and hot. So it's gonna, this spinach is just gonna wilt really quickly. And you just kind of stir it in. Yeah, Harriet says people who register for the March 20th event can join the event at any time. Yes, yep. I will join. Yep. So as long after, as you're registered. I will join after my show. <laughs> yeah and it's so the event is through uh, a local organization 
called Salt Lake Thrive. It's a plant peer community pod. And they really, their mission is to, to just educate people on plant-based, uh, eating plant-based and the benefits. And so all of their events are free and they're based here, you know, in Salt Lake where I live. And so that's why I help them out a lot and do a lot of the events for them. Uh, but Salt Lake Thrive just has a lot of really great events and they probably do an event every month or two months. And uh, they've always got great speakers and, and lots of fun things going on, so. And the name of the event? It's called Spring Into Your Best Life. I get it, because it's the first day of spring or close yes. to the first day of spring. And it's my sister's birthday that day, too. March 20th? Yeah. Two days before me, but is she an Aries or a Pisces? She's a Pisces, because we're both Pisces, because I just had my birthday. Oh, I missed it. When was it? I'm sorry. It was, <laughs> it was the 24th of February. Oh, I'm going to work that in my calendar for next year. Well, happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's nice. All right. So this is looking really good. So I'm going to show it to you again with the spinach in it. Uh, so now we've got not only the starches and all that deliciousness and the lentils, which are so healthy, but now we've got the greens yeah, and of course the greens meal. And yeah, it really is. Greens even have protein. When people ask the protein question, there's so much protein in vegetables. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, you know, what got, what did it for me was when I learned that all living things have protein. So anything that's living is going to have protein. <laughs> so it might be in different amounts and it might be different kinds of, you know, the amino acids might be in different levels, but I mean, if you're looking at like getting protein from an animal product, the building blocks of the protein, the amino acids came from plants that the animal ate. So you're not getting protein from that steak. You're getting it from whatever the plants were that the animal ate. So it just, you know, a lot of people say like, you just skip, skip the middle animal, just eat the plants. Cause then you're just getting all those awesome amino acids and proteins that you need. You don't need to get it through an animal. So, all right, so let's, I'll show this to you now so you can see what it looks like with the spinach. Yep. Cut and up. I feel bad that I'm just gonna be eating this and you guys are all seeing this. You don't get to try it. Judy says, can you place the sweet potatoes with carrots? I don't think their carrots are quite as sweet. No. No, I mean, it would definitely be a more savory meal. It wouldn't be as sweet. Um, and, and honestly, you're going to get it. It's a filling meal because of the sweet potatoes, you, you know, you're getting that really nice uh, starch from getting the, the potatoes. Where do elephants get their protein? Jeff wants to. <laughs> Nobody has plants, that. plants, of course. Okay, so here we go. Now with the spinach and see how that just wilted so nicely. So now you've got the delicious spinach in there. Gorgeous, a doctor who can cook. I love it. I definitely love cooking. Well, then you know what that means. You could be eligible for the next year's Truth About Weight Loss Summit, because I don't know if you know, but this year we had a lot of the doctors doing cooking demos. Oh, that's great. I would love to do that. Yeah. So we had Dr. Baxter Montgomery do one and Dr. Who did we have? We had Dr. Jamie Delaney do one. We had a lot of the doctors doing cooking demos. Yeah. Well, you know, when you eat this way, it's, you know, you just, you end up cooking at home a lot more. And especially with the pandemic too, you're just cooking at home and, and something like this that I can do really easily because I've got a kid at home and uh, it, it, it makes it a lot simpler when you can have a delicious meal like this that's really easy to make. Right. Let's see. There's a question. Dina says, do you eat it with rice? Uh, I haven't yet. It's, uh, I find that it's, uh, it's filling enough the way that it is. Uh, but absolutely you could, I think, you know, the amount that it makes you, you can stretch it farther. So if you have a bigger family or maybe you just want to eat it a few days in a row, uh, definitely. If you add a little bit of 
rice or some other grain to it, um, you know, that's something that could make it last a little bit longer, could go a little bit farther. So I think, I think it'd be delicious. I think you could do like barley or something like that even would be yummy with it. When you were at True North, did they have you do any water fasting yourself just to, to experience what it's like? No, they didn't because when I was there, I was there for 30 days and I was an intern. So I saw the, the, the residents who were staying there and helped out with taking blood pressures and, and things like that. And uh, I don't think that if I were water fasting, I'd be able to, <laughs> to get around and do that. You really have to, when you're water fasting, you lay low you sleep a lot, you just relax uh, to, to really give your body a break. But they did say that as an intern, if I ever want to return, um, that I can get a discount. And I really would love to go and try it out for myself. Uh, I have Honestly, I haven't done it yet just because of the pandemic. So uh, it's something that I plan to do in the future. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I don't know about fun, but something I'd really like to do. I don't think it would be fun at all. I've never gone more than about 40 hours without food and it really wasn't intentional. It's uh, it's not I, pleasant. It's not pleasant to not have food. Yeah. <laughs> I know I was, I was amazed when we had people there who were planning on a 40 day because that's the max that they'll do there. I mean, 40 days without food and it just seems like boring. <laughs> What do you do during the day if you're not eating? <laughs> I know it, it, you know what it frees up so much time though, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, think some about new it, hobbies. Our ancestors, that's all they really did was look for food all day. Yes. And you know, looking for food is fun. When I was in Montana, that's where I did my residency. We loved going camping. We went camping a lot and we camped in this campground and we had been talking to the camp host and he said, well, yeah, we do have a lot of bears around here. And it's because we have all these, these wild berries. And I said, wild berries, you have wild berries. Can we do some foraging for berries? And he, so he showed us all around the area. They had wild strawberries, wild raspberries, and then wild huckleberries. Huckleberries are like a small blueberry that you find in Montana. And so we all went around and just picked and we had just tons of these delicious berries. And I got to say, they tasted even more delicious just because we had gone through the work of going and finding them and eating them. <laughs> Huckleberry. I always thought that'd be a great name for a dog. Speaking of dogs, my <gasps> that would be. you have a dog, right? I do. Let's see your little guy. Oh, let me get her. Hold on. Oh, Sorry. it's a girl. Share. Hey, guys, this is Bailey. She doesn't come on a lot because she's busy oh, working. Oh, sweet so. girl. She is so sweet. How old is Bailey? Well, we think she's nine. She We got her at the shelter when she was four. So that, I mean, that's what they told us. Yeah. Because, you never really know. I think they often sit, tell you younger than they are. Yeah. So adopted. So yeah. Yeah. Saying she's nine and she's a Libra, but we don't know for sure. Oh, she is so sweet. Really? Oh my is. goodness. I love her so much. That's why when people say, do you want to come to my speak at my conference? Like, no, I want to stay home with Bailey. <laughs> yep. I get it. I get it. That's been one thing that's been nice about being at home, working from home is being able to be with my dog too. <laughs> I love working from home. Oh my God. I, yeah. just, I mean, I'm sorry about the pandemic, but this has been so yeah. just being home for. Well, my my little dog is, he's a Yorkie and he's, his name is Moose and he's going to be 17 in a few weeks. Wow. So he's getting up there. That's incredible. Almost he can yeah. old enough to drive. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's always great seeing you. And thanks again. Cause you really, really, you were the star of the show, you know, you, you, without you, I mean, we wouldn't have a show. You were the first person to come on. So that is a, that's an honor right there. Well, I'm just glad that it worked out and it's, it's been a lot of fun to, to be able to be a part of your shows, but I also just love watching your shows too. You've always got amazing speakers and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun just watching your journey too of, of doing this show. Well, thank you. And if you guys want more amazing speakers, including a plant-based orthopedic surgeon who I wasn't even aware of, click the link and sign up for Dr. Nikki Davis's free retreat on Saturday. If you can't make all of it, or if you have to miss all of it, still sign up because then there will be a replay. But if you don't sign up, you won't get to see it. That's right. 
So hopefully I'll see some of you there on Saturday. Great. Well, best of luck. And anytime you want to come on, let me know. Thanks so much, Dr. David. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Tomorrow is the last episode of the first season. And my guest is Diane Doyle from Plant Based Dallas. And she's going to be doing another wonderful cooking demonstration. Take care.